review. That's right, everybody. Welcome back, YouTube's favorite show. If you don't know where that's from, y'all need to subscribe to PewDiePie ASAP. He's about to lose the T-Series in the race for the number one subscribed channel on YouTube. And that's not a big deal, other than the fact that T-Series is a conglomerate and PewDiePie is just one guy and two editors, Brad number one and Brad number two. We can't be letting conglomerates take over the small man. Only in the United States is that allowed. We can't be letting a Swede who lives in Paris being taken over by a conglomerate from India. Subscribe to PewDiePie, do your part. Welcome back though. I told everybody on one of the little polls on my community tab, we're gonna do Lupe next. Did you want mixtape Lupe? Or did you want food and liquor Lupe? My personal favorite mixtape from Lupe Fiasco, Fahrenheit 1st and 15th part two, Revenge of the Nerds. So there's some bangers on this album. I'm probably gonna do more than one in the future, but what we're gonna land on first, Mean and Vicious. And this is one of the songs that he references in the cool on the song Dumb It Down. We ain't from school, nigga. The big words ain't cool, nigga. Yeah, I heard me and vicious, nigga. Yeah, we heard Mean and Vicious, but make a song for the bitches. And you'll understand why, because Mean and Vicious is a very, it's a very lyrically complex song in terms of it's got extended long metaphors. It's got visuals that aren't really anywhere else. So let's just go ahead and jump right in into Mean and Vicious, because this song is a banger. You hear that beat? Just like that. When I first heard that, I was like, mmm, okay, okay, okay. I can't believe he's that rude to those stories, those rhymes, that jewel. Then he put him on the flow like cat food, then put him on the track like glue, then put him on. I can't believe he's that rude to those stories, those rhymes. Like I can't believe he's hurting them and bullying them like that because he's got that skill. Then I put it on the floor like cat food. Literally the way I feed my cat. I put the shit on the floor. They put him on the track like glue. That could be a lot of things. That could be hair trap. That could be track of like Hot Wheels. I used to glue Hot Wheel tracks together in order to make them longer. All kinds of different things that could be going on there. Like glued and put them on your head like cat. Hey, back to you, little black power. I'm just running with a barrel full of black powder with a hole in it, hole in it. Wheezing deep, breathing, running from the fire on the trail. I keep leaving, I can't shake it. I swear, it's heat seeking. I keep seeking somewhere to hide from it, duck and die from it. But it keep, keep it up just when I think that I've done it. it keep Oh, I wanted to stop that so many times right there, but you had to hear the extended metaphor in all of its glory. He's basically using this long ass metaphor, even if he wanted to put down the hot bars, he literally can't, and he's running from it, trying to escape the hotness of his own bars but it keeps catching up because he's holding this barrel of black powder and he's spilling it. Like think of a cartoon where the coyote's running away and the shit's lit on fire and he's running and the fire's catching him. I'm just running with a barrel full of black powder with a hole in it, hold in it, wheezing deep, breathing, running from the file on the trail I keep leaving. It's not a staccato type of rhyme scheme. He makes it like very smooth where the words almost kind of run into each other. Like the shit's flowing like molasses. I'm just running with a barrel full of black powder with a hole in it, hold in it, wheezing deep, breathing, running on the fire, on the trail, I keep leaving. I can't shake it, it's heat seeking. Literally like it's following him because it's seeking heat. He's saying he's that heat, his lyrics are that heat. It keeps keeping up, just when I think that I've done it, it keeps sneaking up. No matter what he does, that flame's coming to him. And that's not even the end of the metaphor. How that flame keep reaching us, just one of the long-winded extended metaphors. I lose this time, I use the example of a fuse to demonstrate how I can't lose. I would put it down, but I can't do to the glue that I use to fuse everything together. Well, I spill some on my hands and got damn, I might have to carry this forever. Well, I'm crazy to the game till they bury me insane. And once was a fool. Bruh. Anybody who doesn't have lyrical skill, that whole shit would have only been like two bars. He strung that out to like 20 bars. He literally 
acknowledges the fact it's just another one of those long-winded extended metaphors of lose and tells you exactly what the metaphor means in case you didn't get it because it was so long-winded this time i use the example of a fuse to demonstrate how i can't lose and then he goes on to say that he's going to carry it forever, this heat that he's bringing, because the glue that he used to fuse everything together, he spills some on his hands, and goddamn, I might have to carry this forever. You see what I'm talking about? You see why I wanted to break this one down? For those of you that don't know how gangs get down in Chicago, tilting your cap in one direction or another in Chicago is a strong meaning in terms of the gang world. Like, you'll get popped just for having your hat on the wrong way. Even Kanye says it in his song Homecoming, where he's talking about Chicago, and he says people come in and like to act tough, make them straighten up their hat, because they ain't about that life. They ain't about that Chicago gang life. He wasn't in the gang, but he was prone to bang. So he wore his hat like that. Maybe he was just doing it to fit into the west side and the south side of Chicago, so that way, you know, maybe he wasn't run up on, or maybe they respected him a little bit more because he wasn't exactly the average dude, you know, skinny skateboarder, black belt at the age of 10, his parents are scholars. Truthfully, I have trouble with second verses cause the first one be so intimidating and be bullying, picking on it, instigating, pointing out all the second one's limitations like you ain't nothing but an imitation like bitch of bacon then he gets to The whole second verse is his music personified. He's like saying truthfully, I have trouble writing second verses a lot of people have trouble writing second verses. A lot of people have trouble on their sophomore album. They had such a success on their freshman album. Their sophomore album sometimes kind of lacks. He's talking to us, but then he takes it into paper level or into like the small world of the second verse. And he says, because the first one be so intimidating, bullying, picking on it, instigating. Like the first verse is like talking to the second verse. Like you're never going to be shit because I came first. Just like siblings. The first one is always picking on the second one. Do that shit with my brother all the time, my little bro. Then he says, pointing out all the second one's limitations, like you ain't nothing but an imitation, like bits of bacon. And bits of bacon, like the brand, bacon bits is what they're called. It's literally imitation bacon, sick. Like who thinks of that? Bits of bacon, then he gets the chorus and the beat to get together. Then they all gang up on him and get to hating. But then around the eighth bar, he tires of they conspire and commiserate. And then he finds his inspiration to spar. He takes a few seconds of judo lessons, sits back on beat, then punches the guitar. They stand it all like, when did you write that? They ain't even write black. First verse already happened, so he don't have a chance to fight back. I like that. Do you see the personification? Then the first verse gets the chorus and the beat together. Then they all gang up on them and get to hating on the second verse. Because the first verse normally happens after a little bit of beat. And then the chorus comes in or the hook does before the second verse comes in. So we got all that to be hating on the second verse. But then the second verse gets tired of their conspiring and commiserating. And he finds his inspiration to spar with the first verse. He says, fuck this, I'm done taking your shit. I'm done being picked on, I'm done being bullied. He takes a few seconds of judo lessons, gets back on beat and punches the guitar. The judo lessons part is because he's a black belt. Literally gets back on beat, like he says, okay, here I am, I'm about to lay this shit down on the beat. But literally gets back on the beat, like you see in movies, like jumping on the beat, punches the guitar. They all stand in awe, like, where did you get this skill from all of a sudden? First verse already happened, so he don't have a chance to fight back. Just sit there and take your punishment for talking shit. It's like a story that unfolded in front of us about like this imaginary fight scene over the first and the second verse. I like that. Abigail Jr. Check me. You gon' respect me. I track, listen to him, feeling himself. Swagger up and a few ad libs to back it up. Bruh. Bruh. Bruh, bruh, Abignail Jr., check me. You better check me. You better under check yourself before you wreck yourself. But literally, Abignail Jr. was the fraudster that the movie Catch Me If You Can with Tom Hanks and DiCaprio was about. It was about Abignail Jr., who was like the youngest fraudster to get away with the most fraud in terms of checks. So he's saying, Abignail Jr., check me. You gonna respect me, I right, track? Now he's demanding shit. And then he's saying, listen to him, feeling himself. Swagger up and a few ad libs to back it up. Literally, ad libs are background tracks like skr skr, hey, hey, quabo, yada yada yada, whatever the fuck. But literally, ad libs to back up the amount of swagger. 
Do you see the complexity? And this is mixtape blue. This ain't even album blue. This was before he dropped his first album. If you add mix to back it up, let's back it up. I think you've had enough. Give me my mic back. You ain't even right that. Oh, it's like that. Track stop pumping till this nigga stop fronting. Yeah, yeah. Now right back. You ain't even right that. Oh, it's like that? Like, you think I didn't do this shit? Now he's got the track on his side. Track stop pumping till this homie stop fronting. And then the track stops. Yeah, yeah. Now right back. Boom, into the hook. Sick. Oh my god, my perils and my odds. I ain't really here, what you hear is a mirage. This ain't the delivery, baby, this is just no mars. The ice cream and pickles, the take away and a massage. The king of <laughs> Bro, my odds were not to make it in the rap game because I grew up in the west side of Chicago. My perils, the things that I had to fall through, the valleys of my life have got me to where I'm at. I ain't really here, what you hear is a mirage. Just like a mirage isn't really there. And the game was in drought of this type of lyricism back when this album came out. And this ain't even the delivery, baby. This is just Lamaze. Like Lamaze class, what prego chicks take in order to like, I don't, I don't even know what Lamaze is for. Learning how to give birth. The ice cream and pickles, the tickles and the massage. Pregnant chicks. Love ice cream, love pickles, but all that to say that this ain't even the real deal yet. This is just mixtape Lou. Ice cream and pickles, the tickle and a massage. The king of the rhythm of the night, elder barge. The camouflage, water in a distance, log in a camel to get there with the quickness. Mean and vicious, when you stole Christmas and hit it in the garage. Ooh. There wasn't a the large He says, King Arthur, rhythm of the night, elder barge. And Elder Barge is the, is the group that had the song Rhythm of the Night. It's just the rhythm of the night. Oh, yeah. So they're the ones that sang that. But also the rhythm, you're listening to the rhythm of the night. Like literally K-N-I-G-H-T, like knighted. Because he is King Arthur that pulled the sword out of the hip-hop stone. There's so much complexity just within that one line. It's such a d nice double entendre. What's up, baby girl? The camouflage water in the distance, flogging a camel to get there with a quickness. Flogging is like whoosh, like whipping horses and whipping a camel. So whipping a camel to get there with a quickness, like sprint. The camouflage water in the distance is the mirage is himself. There was a collage, a barrage, a bra, all things that seem king to help this thing stop. Jump, jump, my battery charge. I'm by my green like string beans and beans from Mars. It's a mean thing to be seen with Oz. Got the F and F. Oh man, I'm a young little thriller. I will resurrect. Oh man, come back for my killer and some dishes. <laughs> he brought everything he brought a collage of all of his of all of his memories all of the things that made him who he is a barrage which is basically firing of artillery or bombs like a barrage of bombs when they got released from the undercarriage of like b-52s so he's dropping bombs on this track in terms of lyricism he feels like this is all the things needed to help start his rap career and then jump, jump, my battery charge. Jumping a car to start, but also jump, jump, my battery charge, I'm ready to go. And then I'm about my green like string beans and beans from Mars. I'm about my green, I'm about that paper like string beans. Not string beans, but green. And beans from Mars. Martians are always depicted as being green. I don't know why, but they are. It's a mean thing to be seen with ours. Got that F and F on me. Mean in a good way. It's a mean thing to be seen with us. Got that F and F on me. First and 15th. That's his label. That's his little crew. And then I'm a young little thriller. I will resurrect, homie, and come back for my killer. I'm a young little thriller like Michael Jackson. I'll resurrect. Just like in the thriller video where they're all disheveled. And then he literally says, I'll come back for my killer in some disheveled apparel. With that same leaking barrel from the first verse. Because he still hasn't dropped it because the shit is permanently glued to his hands. That song is when I knew, damn, this kid could spit from the very beginning. Because I didn't hear the song before I heard the albums. If that introduced you to Mixtape Lupe, if that was something that you had heard before and wanted to hear somebody else break it down, I hope I did justice. I hope you understand why Lupe is one of the best in the game, lyricist-wise. But thank y'all for being here again. Back to normal length video, because this is not an 11-minute Eminem freestyle that takes a dissertation length video just to break down. Hope y'all guys enjoyed it. Subscribe, stay tuned, hit the notification bell, all that stuff. Peace out.